Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Roses for Van Gogh. My name is Tara Lynn. I'm the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat. And this is a super fun, free uh, lesson that I'm excited to paint with you today. Um, this style is really loose, and so you can use the outline provided, or you can just kind of go for it. Um, as far as paint colors today, I have got quite a few colors. You can feel free to use what you have and love. Um, anytime we're painting florals, uh, you really have the flexibility to kind of shake up your paint colors. Um, I've got black, magenta, red, phthalo green, uh, a cream or a tan, white, uh, grass green or green oxide, sap green, whatever you want to call that, um, a cobalt blue. I've got metallic gold on my list. I did not grab that. I need to grab that. And then a deep yellow. And if you have not already, you want to transfer the design. I'm using an old canvas. Um, I kind of have some flowers sketched on here, but um, <clears throat> this is a loose design. And so I'd like to encourage you to kind of just try this on your own. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of step-by-step how I made this outline. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do, um, grab a pencil or pen, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And we're gonna create a table for our vase to sit on. And the fun thing about Van Gogh's style is it's real choppy. It's real loose and free. So don't go crazy stressing about this one. Um, after you've got your table, you want to create a vase and feel free to kind of make the vase a little wonky and lopsided. Uh, and then after you have your vase, I'm going to just draw in my flowers. Now I do have some sketched on here, but do not stress about this part. This is super easy. Um, the shape of our roses is going to be real angular and loose. So the first thing is I'm going to decide where I want my rose to go. So I've got one kind of here and I'm going to draw a center for it. And then I'm going to hold my sharpie kind of towards the end that'll help me be a little more free but i just want to put in some angular shapes to give the impression of layers in this flower and then just surround those angular shapes with a disjointed circle so like i said real choppy that's what we're going for. So I'll find, I've got another flower kind of right next to that in my sample. So I'll kind of make a center there. Some angular shapes to give the impression of petals. And then I'm gonna surround that with the edge of my flower. And that's it. This is a real kind of uh, basic, super easy rose shape. This one over here, I don't see the center. The center is kind of looking this way. So just gonna draw around the edge there. Maybe add another one up here. So you kind of find your center and then just throw in some real choppy angular petals. Easy peasy. So center, some angles. There's another flower. So don't be afraid to just kind of play with this. And then once we have our roses, I'm just going to throw in some stems here. We're going to hide a lot of this with greenery. But we can do that as we paint. But we do want enough stems for the flowers that we create. So that's the basic idea there. So go ahead and work on your vase and your roses. I'm going to go grab my gold paint and then I'm going to get started.
All right. First things first, I am going to get some blue on my palette. Cobalt blue. A little phthalo green. And then a little white. I'm going to work with the background first. So I'm going to get a nice flat brush. Now I want my background um, in my sample. It's kind of mint green. I might go a little more teal, but regardless, I'm going to pick some blue up. Probably an equal part of that phthalo green to blue and a whole lot of white. I like the color that I mixed up. I do want to go a little lighter, so I'm going to scoop some of this off to the side here and add some more white in there. Kind of get a lighter shade and a darker shade of the color that I'm going to work with. And if you want yours more to the green tint or mint tint, you would just add more phthalo green. Um, let me show you. I know what that does. All right, so whatever color you choose, I'm gonna go ahead and just start filling in the background. I'm gonna start with a solid background, but I'm gonna add some fun variation in there. All right. So once you get your background done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides while I've got this color. Um, just so I don't have to worry about that later. You can always do your sides at the end if you prefer. I like to just keep my sides solid.
All right, so I've got my background completely covered here, except for the base, the table there. Um, what I'm gonna do now is add a little more white and a little bit of my phthalo green, kind of mint this up a bit. Now what I'm going to do here in the background is start just kind of making some waves. On one side and some straight lines on the other. And just give some variation to this background. It may be easier for you um, if you don't like working with this large brush, you can always switch to a round brush. And I'm just gonna create some variation on this color and add the waves and texture in there. I gotta be honest, I'm not super crazy about how this is blending, so I'm gonna zap it with a dryer first. I'm gonna do this on a dry layer. So I want my background to be dry. Sometimes this will work well, um, wet, wet on wet, but I'm not really liking the effect it's giving me, so I'm gonna go wet on dry. I think I'll just get a little more oomph, a little more of the, here we go. Yes, this is what I wanted. All right. And so this is just meant to add some variation. So whether you go lighter, darker, add more blue, add more green, just shake up your colors a bit. And put a little movement in that background. So while you're adding movement and texture in the background, know some of this is going to get covered, and that's okay. All right, I'm going to get a little tan. cream on my palette here and a little black and I just want to add in a color at the bottom here <clears throat> so to begin with I'm going to start with tan and gold for my table 
And I can actually just kind of mix that right here on my palette. Or on my canvas, not my palette, my canvas. And remember, this is kind of a choppy painting, so you don't have to make this even and straight. I'm going to put a little kind of jut out to the top on that right side there. All right. <clears throat> Next. Next, 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 uh, I'm going to get some magenta. So kind of working with the idea of layering here, I'm going to go ahead and add in my stems um, because they are farther back than my the vase that's showing and the flower buds. So I'm going to take some pure magenta um, you can add a pinch of white to it if you want to lighten it a little bit, but I, this color is, is intentionally bold. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw in these bright stems. A lot of which might get covered, and that's okay if they do. But as we layer in greenery and some of that other stuff, I don't want to forget to put those in because then it'll just give the impression that our roses are kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. Alright, for the next step, I'm going to add some of this cobalt blue and white, and I'm just going to put down the layer on my base. I don't want it incredibly light, but I just want to lighten it a pinch. So whatever color you want your base to be, put that color on your base now. Because I am going to let that dry, and then we're going to layer up some some prettiness on that vase as well.
And again, don't worry about the vase being, you know, a perfect shape. It's okay for it to have little waves and kind of some funny, um, interesting movement in there. So I just laid down that flat color. We're going to decorate the vase a little later. Right, I want to get some of my sap green out onto my palette. And I refer to sap green, that's a grass green, a yellow green. And I'm going to start making just some odd shapes in here to represent leaves. So I'm going to pull a little bit off to the side, and I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of magenta to that green over here and that's going to give me more of a uh, olive green and so I'll have two greens to choose from. I'll have a more olive green and then I'll have a true grass green and then of course I can add white to any of these colors and lighten them up. So. I'm just going to start up at the top and underneath these big blooms, I'm going to add some rose-like leafy shapes. Again, very angular, um, <clears throat> very loose and free. I'm going to start with the olive green. Might switch to a flat brush here just to get more of a, an accurate point. And muddled up this color. Something crazy. So I'm gonna make a little more of it. There we go. I accidentally dipped in my black there, and so I changed up the color more than I had wanted. Of course, you can absolutely add black to your color. I just did that on accident and then ended up with something totally different than I wanted. But the idea here right now, I want to create these shapes with a dark green color. And I'm not really even at this point looking at my sample because it's okay just to start placing in some just giant leafy shapes. None of this. is meant to be kind of perfect. It's all just fun and loose and
And I did have a little rosebud down here that I covered with my background, so I am just going to not forget this guy. And so once I've got about half the space filled, I'm just going to make sure I've got a nice deep coverage. I don't need it to be completely opaque, but I do, I do want it to hide the background pretty well. All right, so that's my deep dark green. I'm gonna go back, grab some of this sap green. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So we need to fill in a lot of this space, so I'm gonna add twice as many of these weird angular petals. And this sap green that I have is very um, translucent, so I'm gonna add a little white to it just to Kind of prevent some of that. And as you work on this, get away from the idea that these have to look like perfect shapes. We are filling in background and that's, that's a lot of what's going on here. So lots of angles, lots of free fun forms is what we've got going on. So take a few minutes, get some greenery in there. I'm gonna go ahead and let some of this greenery dry and I'm gonna start working down here on my base. And so I'm gonna get a nice thin round brush. I'm gonna pull some blue and a little bit of black into that blue. Just a little, black is a very strong pigment, but I want to darken this up a little bit. 
And with this darker blue, I'm going to make a series of lines that come around the curved part of the base. just to add some design to it. So I'm gonna put some of that up at the top of the base and then right about mid base, we get some more of those. There's a little bit kind of up here where the flowers are in the vase and then down by this there's kind of a little, I don't know if that's a crack or I don't know what I was thinking on my sample there. Just a little break in that vase. I'm also going to use this deeper color, this black blue to give this vase an outline. All right, then I'm gonna pull some of this blue and add a little bit of white to it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this lighter color. I'm gonna add some lines with the lighter blue. I'm really just going to fill in a lot of this space with some lines. The idea here is just to get lots of movement, variation and color in this vase and then we'll come back through and add some flowers. <clears throat> All right, for the flowers, I'm going to use white, tan, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of green. So I'm going to start with a small round brush and some white paint. And wherever I want a flower, I'm just going to kind of create a little sunburst design. to happen in this color. Again, don't worry about these flowers looking realistic. Impressionist is what we're going for.
All right, so I started that with white. Now I'm gonna dip in some of that tan. I'm gonna add less tan. But I'm gonna come through and just kind of smush in some tan. Same starburst type movement in these flowers. I'll wipe that off. Now I'm over to the side. I'm gonna put a little yellow, a tiny bit of that green. I want this color to to kind of lean towards yellow. I don't I don't want it to be heavy on the green, but just real light. And in the center of these flowers, I'm gonna add a little bit of this color. I don't even have a lot to work with. I need to mix up a little more. And I don't need a lot, just a dab here or there to show, again, difference in color. Then I'm going to go right into that bright, deep yellow and just add a few dabs right at the center of the flower. I'm going to clean off my brush. And I'm going to go back to my white. And so we've mixed up a lot of color into these flowers. So if you want to just add some bright white in areas, just to kind of show there is some brightness in there. When we start mixing, sometimes we lose some of that. Kind of play with your vase and add different little details here and there if you want to. Remember, there are no rules in art. You can play and have a good time and make your painting however you want to. Alright, I'm going to start adding some color up on my flowers. Um, a lot of this flower color I got by mixing red with white, which is a different color than the magenta. Um, if you would prefer your flowers have more of a magenta tone versus the red tone, you can absolutely do that. There's no right or wrong rose color. Roses come in all different colors. Um, but I'm going to get some red and I'm going to mix this up with some white and put down kind of a starting layer on my flowers there. All right, so I've got, move this over. I've got some white pulled off to the side and I'm going to add a little red to that. My brush was a little dirty, so it is a little muted. I'm cool with that. I'm not stressing about that at all. All right, so I'm just gonna lay down the base color here. And really the only thing you need to worry about at this point is making sure when we're done with this, there's no white left on the canvas. Um, other than that, I mean, don't feel like you have to stick to those edge lines. You want to make sure you can't see your outline. But other than that, just go for it. We're just filling in shapes.
All right, so I've got these roses filled in. Perfecto. I am going to zap this with my dryer and just get this layer dry um, because I want to work wet on dry so it does not blend. All right, I'm gonna go for a smaller brush. Round is what I'm gonna use, but of course you use whatever you'd like. Um, I've got this pink mixed up. I'm gonna add a little magenta in there and darken it. And if you don't have very much of this mixed up, like I kind of, used a lot. I probably should mix some more. So white, red, and magenta is what we're looking for. And we need a darker mixture than what we had for the base color. All right. I feel like that's a pretty good color. It's a little darker than what I have there. Maybe a little more magenta. I don't want to be afraid of the magenta here. All right. Got a ton of paint on my brush. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna find the center of these flowers. So just gonna kind of fill that in. Again, angular choppy movements. I'm just switching brushes because I have so much paint on that one. <laughs> All right, so with this color, after I find my centers, uh, I'm gonna start bringing those out with this color into those choppy petals. Remember in the beginning, we kind of just made some angular shapes. If you can't see your lines, no big deal. Just go in there and kind of make some shapes that give the impression of layers that come out from those centers. Once you've got those in there, I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to outline um, or add some darker angular marks around the edges. And it doesn't even have to be, a, you know, a complete solid outline. Remember, this is a very choppy, very... Um, loose style and it doesn't have to feel per it doesn't have to be perfect it's okay to have open edges it's okay to have different edges than you had planned that was very much the style of van gogh which is what we're playing with his style was all about movement and shape
once you're happy with that, um, I am going to also remind you down here we had kind of a, a rosebud going on. So I've got the in a few different colors and not forget about that guy. All right, I'm gonna go back to a small flat brush. I'm gonna pull some of my tan to the side and just a little bit of red into that tan. Oops, not black. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come up to my rose, pet or my rose blooms, my rose petals, and I'm just going to tap in, oops, I'm, I need to lighten this a little bit. Don't be afraid to lighten it with white if your color is too similar. Mine was too similar. So I'm going to start bringing in some of this color, just playing, tapping it in these petals in large angular shapes. And this color is not too different. Um, it's not pink and I can see it with my eye, but it's not giving me the pop that I want. So I'm gonna add some white in there. So never ever be afraid to go off script if it's not giving you the, the zhuzh that you want. I'm gonna let what's going up here dry a little bit and I am gonna go back to um, a small brush, small round, and my magenta. What I'm gonna do with this is give some of these petals down here, some of these leaves, a pop of magenta as an outline. Again, it does not have to be a full outline. We're really just kind of highlighting some of these areas. Add in some color in here. Have some fun with it. I don't know what happened there, but I dipped in my blue and I'm not even mad about it. And so by doing this, you can kind of emphasize some of those angles. It really just gives a little bit of color in an area of the painting that would normally just recede and not be noticed.
right, I'm going to take some of this gold that I had out from earlier that I used a little bit in the base here. And then I am going to pull some of this into my background, following some of the lines and shapes that I had designed earlier. And then do you want gold in your vase? That's totally up for you to decide. I might just add little pinches in the center of these flowers. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is kind of just my finishing touch step. I'm gonna get this um, small brush, small round brush, and I'm gonna take some deeper colors, so maybe the darkest magenta I have. Um, I might even mix a little red in there, create a brand new color. And then just kind of maybe add in some more lines up top, whatever your flower needs. So yes, these, this version is different from my original. I did create my original on my iPad, so it, you know, obviously it's a little less painterly, but aside from that, anytime I create something, um, especially when I'm kind of working um, with, for example, this was called Roses for Van Gogh, so kind of using his style in mind, it's going to be different. It's going to be different because I'm not copying. I'm just kind of letting um, the freedom hop in. And interact with my painting. So every time I make something, it's going to be slightly different. But we want it to be, you know, kind of give us the impression of the artwork that we're honoring. And so by following similar steps and using similar techniques and kind of repeating what the original artist did in some ways, we get a very similar look while keeping it true to our own style. All right, I've completed what I feel like is um, the teaching part of the lesson. So from here on out, I'm just doing some finishing touches. I'm pretty happy with mine. Um, some things that I want to do for me personally, I don't feel like the leaves have the same pop. So I'm going to mix a little yellow green and just give another layer of green um, on some of these leaves. That's something I like brightness in there. So just adding some of that. Um, remember, you may want to sign your painting. You can always add more movement, more texture in the background. You can always add more petals. Um, all of my petals right now are in a background layer, but you could add some on top if you wanted to. Um, so there are lots of different options. For finishing touches, you could add a little more zhuzh to your vase. Whatever you feel like your piece needs. But I am pretty happy with mine. 
So up in the corner here, you have my version that I created on my iPad. On the, um, what do you call this? Supply list is my second version, which is a little more like the one I created today. And then I've got my version from today. So each one is a little different, but I feel like it, it kind of reflects the beauty of a Van Gogh piece in some ways, and I really like it. Um, it's a lot of fun to take this style and just kind of make different things with it. So I cannot wait to see yours. Um, thank you everyone for being a supporter. Your support means everything to me, and I love painting with you. I absolutely love it. Um, so I'll throw my supporter information up there. You can always look up on my Facebook page information on how to become a supporter. Um, make sure that you share your work with everyone. You can do so here in this Facebook group. Um, you can type in facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat. It is free to join and I can't wait to see what you create. You can share all of your uh, works that you create with my workshops or you can share things that you create on your own and you can share by tagging me on the socials at paint rinse repeat or hashtag paint rinse repeat and I'll be able to see it and I'll throw you a like and a share as well so um, make sure you share your work thank you so much for joining me everyone I had a great time with you painting this today and I will see you next time